so we can have this for later. Um, but really what I want to cover today, guys, is just the foundational kind of tool that we go over, which is um, objection handling. And there's a, a script that we followed in the past and something I want to share with you guys and kind of walk through it. Um, but really, it's kind of the foundation for how you would handle any script. This is like a universal objection handler that you can use in multiple situations, whether you're talking to someone on the phone, you're trying to book the appointment, whether you're talking to someone in person, whether you're at an open house, whether you're you know, on a presentation, whether it's a buyer consult or a listing agreement, and you're trying to close the deal, it's really a universal uh, objection handler that if you master kind of the fundamentals of this, it's just going to take your sales game to a whole nother level because it gets you to think and it gets you to listen rather than just try to like, you know, throw your spiel or throw your rebuttal. It actually gets you to kind of walk the client through um, to the finish line, you know, and a, a lot of it has to do with psychology and there's NLP and stuff behind it, but we'll, we're going to go over it in depth right now. We're going to do some role play. So those of you guys that are on here, I'm going to be calling on you guys. So please, if you could show your faces, if you can unmute yourself when I call on you, because I want to do some role plays to make this as effective as possible. Um, but what I want you to take away, guys, is really the structure of how this thing is ran and start thinking in your mind, like, well, how can I use this in different scenarios, right? When I come across different things. Um, so in the chat, can you guys write down, like, what's the most common objection you're getting right now when you're talking to buyers or sellers, whether they don't want to move forward or they want to, they don't want to book an appointment or whether you're uh, meeting with them in person and you're trying to get them to commit to you. What's the common objection you're getting? Or maybe what are some of the most common objections you've gotten in the past? on why someone doesn't want to meet or book the appointment. What do most people say? Um, so I got Thomas wrote the rates and recession, uncertainty in the market, recession waiting for prices to drop because they have been seeing all the prices drop on Zillow. Um, other than just the recession, right? We know that's a hot topic right now, but what's like a typical objection that people can throw out to you when you're like, hey, let's book an appointment or let's meet or what have you. What's another typical objection that someone can can throw at you. Not in the market due to stocks. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up some common objections as well. Um, And I'm going to show you guys where to find these things also. Give me one quick second while I pull these up. Okay. They want to wait and see where the market goes, increase interest rate stocks are not too motivated, just browsing. They want to take a break till things settle. Um, so what I'm gonna pull up right here is a list of common objections that we see all the time. And remember guys, like right now, the big topic is the recession and the rates and stuff like that, which is, is, is what a lot of people are talking about. So you definitely want to learn how to answer that. But at the same time, there's all these other objections that are pretty common. Um, new construction, we don't really want to work with an agent. So if someone is trying to get a new construction, they don't want to work with an agent. They want to go straight to the builder. Um, I already have another agent I'm working with. I already scheduled a showing with another agent. Um, I'm going to wait till next year. Um, I want to rebate. You know, do you guys give any cash back? If I work with you, do you guys give cash back? Um, my company has a relocation department that they want me to use and I have to use them. 
uh, I'm working with a friend or my wife's not available to join us on the appointment. So I got to ask my wife first before I commit to an appointment. Um, uh, I'm not available. I'm just looking right now, right? Like if they come into an open house, right? They, I'm just looking. I'm not really shopping around. I'm just kind of browsing, right? So there's going to be different types of objections that you guys get um, for different scenarios. So the key thing to being really effective with your sales is number one, learning the most common types of objections and knowing like what the answers are and knowing what people really mean by an objection. Because on the surface level, um, they may say something, one thing, but really they mean something else, right? Like for example, when someone says, Hey, do you guys, uh, if I work with you, you know, do you guys give any rebate back? You know, if I work with you, do you give any rebate? Do you give any kickback from your commission? You know, cause Redfin does that, or this other company said they'll do that. Do you guys give any commission back? What is the buyer really looking for when they're asking for commission back? Like, yes, they're asking for commission. That's what they're saying, but when you take that a step further and you go deeper, what is it that they really want at the end of the day? They want a discount, they want a deal, they want the closing costs, help of closing costs, a deal. At the end of the day, when someone asks you for a commission back, even though they're asking you to give part of your commission, what they really want, they wanna make sure they're getting the best deal possible. They wanna make sure they're getting the best price or they wanna make sure they're saving the most money, right? It's not necessarily that they want your commission back, like they want you to pay them out of your pocket. They just wanna feel like they're getting the best deal, right? When someone asks you like, okay, you know, you, know, you sound pretty good on the phone, but, I haven't really seen you or heard of you or how long have you been in the business? What do they really want at that point? When someone says they don't want to meet with you because they, they haven't heard of your company or they haven't heard of you or they haven't seen you around or they don't know how many deals you've closed. There you go, Thomas wrote, reassurance in your experience. They wanna make sure they're working with an experienced agent, right? Um, right now, even with people saying they're waiting on the recession because they're seeing prices drop and stuff like that, and there's uncertainty in the market, at the end of the day, what do they really want? Or what are they trying to prevent? Or what do they really want when they're saying they wanna wait because of the market or because of the uncertainty, because of the rates. They want safety. They wanna make sure they're getting the best deal. They wanna make sure they don't overpay, right? For a property, right? They wanna make sure they get the best deal at the end of the day, right? So what I'm walking you guys through guys is I'm, what I, I want you to take note of is that Anytime someone throws an objection at you, there's the objection that they say, but then behind that, there's the deeper meaning of what it is they actually are trying to accomplish or what it is they want or what that objection actually means to them, right? So the key point is, is when someone throws an objection at you is for you to be able to think and think to yourself, well, at the end of the day, this is what you really want. And this is what I'm hearing you say, right? So that's the key fundamental behind that. So what I want to introduce, I want you to think about that. And I'm going to introduce to you the script that we're going to go through. And it's called the Ryu script. Does anybody know who Ryu is? And what, Street Fighter? Raise your hand if you've, if you've ever heard of the video game Street Fighter. Who's Ryu? <laughs> He's a player. In the player, Street. right? Mm -hmm. He does the oh, you can, right? The Ryu, right? So the Ryu is the ultimate objection handler. And it's based off of Ryu, the Street Fighter character that knocks fools out with the, with the oh, you can, right? 
That's what we're calling this, the Ryu, the ultimate objection handler. If you go into the Google Docs and you type in team resource and team resources, you just search Ryu, you'll be able to see this document, it's in there. And then I can put this in the chat as well, um, the link to the chat. But it's basically what this is, is this is a template for how you go down and walk someone through an objection. And it's the same thing that you're gonna lit, that you're gonna use on any objection that comes across your way. It's the same process. It's the same way of walking someone through the objection, getting to the root of the meaning and being able to close them either for the appointment, get them to close for, um, to sign with you or list with you. Or let's say you're trying to get them to reduce their price on the property, or you're trying to get them to make a decision. It's the same basic pattern or, or checklist that you go through to get them to do that. So we break it down into five steps. The first step is extremely important guys, which is called the repeat and approve. And we're gonna go through this kind of slowly and we're gonna do some role play. So I'm gonna need some of you guys, whoever's available to role play this to unmute yourself or I'll call on you. Um, but the first step guys is when someone gives you an objection like, Thomas, you know, I don't want to do anything right now because I want to see what happens with the market. I hear a lot of stuff going on in the news and I want to see what happens with the market. When someone tells you that, guys, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to repeat and approve that, right? So repeating and approve is basically you're going to repeat pretty much verbatim what they just told you. And then you're going to approve them or acknowledge them that you understand that you're listening, that it's a valid point, that you agree, you're acknowledging what they're saying. So this is the first step that we're gonna practice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say the objection and then you're gonna repeat it and you're gonna approve it. And I'll give you an example. Um, who would like to volunteer and, and role play this with me? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to volunteer. I need a volunteer. I'll do it. Let's go, Zyra. Okay, Zyra, so I want you to give me, give me the objection. The objection that we're using is, hey, you know, Enrique, I want to wait to buy because I want to see, you know, I hear all this stuff in the market and I want to see what's, what's going to happen with the market first. So I want you to tell me that, and then I'm gonna show you how to repeat and approve that. So go okay. ahead. Yeah, I want to wait and buy to see how the market goes more in the future. I see it's changing a lot. Okay. So Zyra, um, you wanna to wait to buy because you wanna see you know, what happens with the market because you're seeing a lot of changes. Yes. Um, I completely understand. And that, that's a valid point. That makes absolute sense. Okay, so we'll stop right there. What I just did is I just repeated what you told me, right? So one of you guys may wanna hit mute over there or, uh, cause we're echoing pretty bad. Um, so you're always gonna repeat first, right? So Zyra told me, hey, I wanna wait. I don't want to, I don't know if it's a good time to buy. I want to wait and see what happens with the market. And I'm just going to repeat right back to her. So you're going to wait and you want to see what happens with the market before buying. That's the repeat part. And then I'm going to approve it, which basically means that I understand, Hey, I completely understand. Or, Hey, that makes sense. Or, Hey, that's a good point. Or, Hey, that's a valid concern. Right. Or, Hey, I understand where you're coming from. So what I'm accomplishing by doing that is I'm repeating back to them what they said so that they understand that I'm listening. And then I'm approving it by saying, hey, that's a valid concern or I understand where you're coming from or that makes sense. And that gets them to know that I basically, I understand them. I'm listening to them and I understand and I'm acknowledging what their objection is or what their concern is. What most people do is, this is how most agents respond to an objection. Um, Zyra, let's try that again. Go ahead and tell me, you know, you wanna wait because you wanna wait and see what happens with the market. Um, I'm waiting right now. 
um, because I want to see what happens with the market. Yeah, but you know, right now, even though you want to wait, it's still a good time to buy. Like the rates are at an all time low historically, you know, like people are still buying and getting good deals. How do you feel, Zyra, after I just told you that? Still like kind of unsure. Like not, I guess, yeah, not validated. Did I validate you? Did I acknowledge you? No. Or did I just answer your objection? Like try to throw my point right back at you, right? Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately that's how most agents operate, right? They're talking to someone on the phone, they're trying to book an appointment or they're meeting with someone face-to-face -face, or they're on a consult. And instead of listening and repeating and approving, they're basically like, they just shoot their bullet, right? Like the client says something and then they just shoot right back, right? And they try to justify why or convince them why they need to move forward or why they need to do that or whatever it might be. If you do that, guys, and a lot of people do that normally and naturally, you're going to turn off a lot of clients, right? A lot of clients are going to feel that you're just a salesperson and that you truly don't listen to them. And you truly don't understand where they're coming from. Um, so Zyra, let's, I want you to try that now. Now I'm going to say something to you and I want you to repeat and approve it. And I'm going to make it a little fun. I'm just going to mix it up. So it's not going to be anything to do with real estate. I'm just going to give you an objection so that you understand how to use this. It's just a, out of nowhere. I'm going to make up some random objection about anything. And then I want you to repeat it and approve it to me. Okay. Okay. Um, Zyra, yeah, I don't want to go outside because it's, it's a snowstorm right now. Yeah, I understand it's um, snowy or yeah, I can see. <laughs> wait, okay, wait. So do, yeah, there is a snowstorm and I so can understand it. why you wouldn't want to go outside. So first step is just repeat what I said, right? Like try to repeat it word for word, right? So Zyra, I don't, yeah, I don't really want to go outside today because it's, there's a snowstorm coming today. So you don't want to go outside because there's a snowstorm? I can understand that. There you go, right? So she repeated exactly what I said and then she approved it saying, hey, I can understand that, right? So what that told me is that she listened to me. I told her there's a snowstorm. I don't want to go outside. And she said, she repeated that and then she approved it by saying, hey, I can understand that. Um, so now let's go down the line. Mai, can you, can you do one with me? So we're gonna do the repeat and approve. So I'm gonna say something to you and then you're gonna repeat it and then you're gonna approve it. You don't have to say, I understand. There's, there's different approvals. I understand, that makes sense. Hey, I understand where you're coming from. I agree. Totally. Hey, I get it. Like those are different approvals that you can do. So um, my, yeah, uh, that sounds good, but I don't really like chocolate ice cream. Oh, you don't really like chocolate ice cream. I can understand that. Or I see. <laughs> there you go. Right. All right. Let me, let's, do, let's do one more. Um, Let me see. Uh, yeah, I don't really want to go to the rest to that restaurant. I heard they have cockroaches everywhere. Oh, you don't want to go to that restaurant because there are roaches everywhere. I wouldn't either. <laughs> there you go. All right, we're making this fun. Okay, uh, let's go down the line. Uh, let's see. Iris, can you do one? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh. No, you good. Hey, Iris. Uh, 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 hold on. I think we got two irises on today, right? Which iris is going? Okay. Uh, yeah, Iris. I don't really like McDonald's. The food's hella greasy. Um, I totally get it. Uh, you, it sounds like you doesn't like McDonald's because the food is greasy. Okay. So you did it backwards. You approved it and then you repeated it, right? It's important you do it the other way around, right? First repeat it and then approve it. Right. So yeah, Iris, I don't really like McDonald's. The food's hella greasy there. 
um, it sounds like you don't like McDonald because it's, the food is greasy. I completely understand. There you go. Repeat it and approve, right? Thomas, I'm calling on you. Yeah, Thomas, uh, everything you say sounds good, but I haven't really heard of your company, you know, so I don't really know if I want to work with you. Hey, Enrique, it sounds like you haven't heard about our company yet, which I, I totally get. And what did you say at the end? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so I haven't really heard of your company, and I don't know if I want to work with you. Enrique, it sounds like you haven't really heard about our company yet. And because of that, you don't really know if you want to work with us. I'm actually kind of the same way, too. I love to kind of see reviews first as well. Okay. So you. You put a little bit more on it, right? So I want you to keep it real simple. Just repeat and approve it. Hey, I totally understand. Hey, that's a valid concern, right? Because then the next part is where we're gonna add some more to it, right? So Thomas, yeah, I haven't really heard of your company. And you know, because of that, I'm not sure if I wanna work with you guys. Enrique, it sounds, Enrique, like, it you sounds like you haven't heard of our company yet. And because of that, you're not sure if you wanna work with us. And I think that's a valid point. All right, stop, boom, there you go. So you just repeated back what I said, and then you just approved it, right? So what you're, you're now telling me like, hey, this is the concern, right? I'm clarifying this is the concern. And then, hey, that's a valid point. Because sometimes someone can give you an objection and then you repeat it back to them, but it's not really what they meant, right? So by you also repeating it back to them, you're also clarifying that this is what they meant, right? You're isolating what the objection is. Now, if if uh, if if he were to say like, if I were to tell him, hey, I've, I've never heard of your company, so I don't know if I want to work with you. And he was he said, hey, you never heard of our company, um, and you want to find a company that you've heard of. There could be two different understandings right there, right? Maybe I just need to know a little bit more about you. Maybe I don't really care about hearing of your company. I just want to know about you, right? So sometimes you're not on the same page, but when you repeat it and then you approve it, then that clarifies for the client to correct you or not. Like, no, that's not what I meant. What I meant was like, hey, I just need to, I just need to know a little bit more about you, right? Um, okay, so step two, guys, we got the repeat and approve, right? And this is something that's just going to take some time for you to do it and repeat it and, and get familiar with how to speak in, those, in that way. Step two is going to be level shift, right? We talked about earlier that when someone says something, they throw an objection at you. That's the objection, but there's a deeper meaning behind it, right? What the root is and what they're actually trying to do. So level shift is where you say, hey, what it sounds like you're telling me or what I'm hearing you say, right, is X. So when I tell Thomas like, hey, you know, I never... I've never heard of your company and I'm not sure if I want to work with you. He's going to repeat it. He's going to approve it. And then he's going to level shift and he's going to tell me what the deeper meaning is, right? So he's going to say, hey, you've never heard of our company. You're not sure if you want to work with me. I totally get that. That's a valid point. What it sounds like you're telling me though is that you want to work with someone who's reputable or you want to make sure you do your homework first before choosing an agent. Right? Because we went from, I've never heard of your company. I don't know if I want to work with you. But really the deeper meaning behind that is I want to make sure that I'm working with someone that, that is experienced, someone that has a track record. Like there's a deeper meaning behind that. So this is now where you're taking step one and step two and you're putting those two together. So Thomas, let's go with you again. Um, I want you to go step one and step two. So repeat and approve. And then go to the next step is tell me what you're actually hearing me say. Hey, what I, what it sounds like you're telling me or what I'm hearing you say from this or what I think you're saying and then stop right there and tell me what, what you think I'm saying. All right. So Thomas, I've never heard of your company and I just never heard of you guys. Right. So I don't know if I, if I can work with you, if I've never heard of. You. Hey Enrique, thank you for sharing that. And it, I understand that you haven't heard about our company 
and not sure if you would like to work with us. I think that's a valid point. And from what you're telling me, it sounds like you would like to work with someone that you might have heard from heard about before or is a reputable company. Is that correct? Correct. There you go. So you you naturally already went to step three, which is the tie down, right? So is that correct? Isn't that what you're saying? Isn't that what you mean? And then you're getting me to acknowledge, yes, that's correct, right? So it kind of, you naturally kind of went to step three. So step one was, hey, Enrique, you've never heard of our company. You're not sure if you want to work with us. I completely understand. That's a valid point. What it sounds like you're telling me is you want to make sure you work with someone who's reputable and you want to do your research first. And then step three, the tie down, is that correct? Is that what I'm hearing? Does that sound right? Is that what you're saying? Right? Now you're getting, you're basically walking me down the line and isolating what the objection is, right? Um, who else would like to try that uh, besides Thomas? I'll do it with the snowstorm. Okay, snowstorm. Okay, uh, Zyra. I'm not sure if I want to go out outside today because uh, there's supposed to be a storm coming out. It might be too cold. So it sounds like you don't want to go outside because there's going to be a storm. I understand that. Um, what it sounds like you're telling me is it's too cold for you to go outside. Um. Step three. Is that correct? Is that correct? Yes, that's yes. correct. That's you're hearing me 100%. Uh -huh. Okay, now now I want to throw this back to you, Zyra, with in terms of real estate, right? So Zyra, um, hey, you sound really, you know, everything sounds good that you're saying, but you know, I know you just got your license, so I'm just not sure if you have enough experience to help us sell our house. Um, so what it sounds like, uh, sorry, so repeat, and approve, repeat and approve. So you don't think I have don't enough experience because I just got my license. I understand that that's valid. Um, what it sounds like is you might want to go with someone who has enough, um, support behind them, enough experience. Does that sound correct? Okay. Yes, that sounds correct. All right, good. That was good. Right? Because you might hear that quite often, right? You might hear someone say, hey, I, you know, how long have you been in the business? I've only been in the business, you know, a year. Well, you know, I, I just don't know if you have enough experience to sell my house. So, hey, you don't know if I have enough experience to sell your house because I've only been in the business for a year. I completely understand where you're coming from. That's a valid point. Number two, level shift. What it sounds like you're telling me is you want to make sure you go with an agent who has, you know, all the resources to get your home sold in the quickest amount of time. Is that correct? Or does that sound right? So you're taking my objection and you're taking yourself out of the picture and you're just isolating it to like, at the end of the day, this is what you're talking about. This is what you mean. Is that correct? Um, good job. Let's go on to someone else. We're going to try this with someone else. Who else would like to volunteer? Mai, you up for the challenge? Are you up for the challenge? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so my, yeah, you know what? Um, everything sounds good you're saying, but I have a family member who's in the business and I'm probably going to use them, you know, so I'm, I'm just not sure if I want to meet with you. I have a, I have a family member that I was thinking of using. It sounds like you have a family member that you would want to work with. I can understand that. Um, what I'm hearing from you is that you want to work with someone that you're familiar with. Is that correct? Um, not just familiar, but also someone who has like the experience and, and the reputation. So now, so see, now I threw, I threw something back at you. So now just go back to level shift again. So what it sounds like you're telling me. 
So it sounds like you're telling me that you're looking for someone with more reputation and experience. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, let's try that all over again, right? So on the first part, on, on step one, when you repeat and approve, don't tell me it sounds like, just repeat what I said, right? You're gonna tell me it sounds like on step two. So it sounds like you're telling me. So step one, just repeat what I said. So my, yeah, you know what? It, you know, um, thanks for calling. It sounds good, you know, what you said. And, and you seem like a nice person. I just, I have a, my cousin who's a realtor and I promised him I'd, I'd work with him you know, and I'm probably gonna give him a call first. So you have a cousin that you promised that you wanna work with? I can totally understand. What it sounds like is that you're, <laughs> I'm stuck in this. So if I, if I have a cousin, right, that I would wanna work with, what would be the deeper meaning behind that? Why would I want to work with my cousin? Or what am I assuming my cousin is going to do for me? Have your best interests and give you a better deal. There you go. Not necessarily better, but the best deal, right? Maybe have your best interest at heart. Maybe someone you can trust. Maybe someone who you, you know, who takes care of you, right? That's really what I'm, what I'm saying. So let's go through that again. So my, yeah, you know what? It sounds good. You, you're really nice. Thanks for calling. I just, I have a family member who's in the business and I promised I'd, you know, I'd call them first if I decided to sell, you know, because, you know, they're my family and they, they take care of me. Okay. Um, so you have family that member that is going to be helping you. I can understand that. It sounds to me that you're looking for someone that would have the best interest in you. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, stop right there. Good, that was good. So you repeated, you approved it, you told me what it sounds like, right? And then you said, is that correct? And then I agreed with you. Okay, so this is now where, where we take it to the next, next step. Steps four and five are, are, this is where it gets a little more advanced, right? So temporal presupposition, embedded command, and their motivation and tie down. This is, this is now like taking all those and putting it all into one. So a temporal presupposition is basically you presenting a scenario like in the future. Like, like, let me give you an example. Like if you wanted to date somebody and like they weren't giving you the time of day and you were like, hey, when I take you on our date, like you're going to have a, a good time. So you're already like painting the picture for them, right? Hey, when I take you on this date or once we meet up or once we do that or with the client, hey, once I meet with you in person, you're basically already like assuming or acting as if and already painting a picture of something that is going to happen, right? Instead of saying, hey, can I meet with you? You're saying, no, when I meet with you, you see the difference? Once we meet or when I meet with you, or when I come to your house tomorrow, that's you already assuming the, the, what's going to happen. So temporal pres, presupposition is you saying the when or once or during or when you work with me. That's that part. The embedded command, this is you saying the action item. So, hey, when I meet with you, right, because that's what you're trying to get them to meet with you, that's the embedded command part right? It's almost like you're inserting this command like into their brain. Like when I meet with you or when you sign the deal or when you work with me or when you sign the listing agreement, right? Like you're saying what you want them to do. And then you're going back to their motivation, which was number two, which is what the deeper meaning was behind what they were telling you, right? And then you're going, the tie down, you're saying that is what you want, right? Or that is correct. So let me give you an example of this, right? Um, so someone were to tell me like, hey, Enrique, you know, I just never heard of your company and I'm not sure if, if, if I could work with you. Step one, repeat and approve. Hey, you never heard of my company. You're not sure if you can work with me. Hey, I completely understand. That's a valid concern. That's step number one. 
Number two, level shift. I'm going to shift the level. Hey, but what I'm hearing you say is at the end of the day, you want to make sure you work with someone who's reputable and someone who's going to have your best interest at heart. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So now I'm going to do the number step four. Hey, when you and I meet tomorrow, I'm going to walk you through our process and show you our reputation, show you all the tools that we have, show you exactly how we're going to get you the best possible outcome. That is what you want, correct? So what I did was I, I posed the scenario when you and I meet tomorrow or when, when and then embedded command is you and I meet tomorrow. Um, and then I went back to their motivation. I'm going to show you our track record, right? I'm going to show you all the tools and resources we have, which is number two, is, which is what they were really trying to say behind their objection. And then I'm going to close it with a tie down, which it says that is what you want, right? So I'm walking them through that. That is what you want. Okay, so who wants to try that part? I know this is a little, little more complex. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, Zyra. Um, so the, the objection we're going to go back to is, uh, Zyra, yeah, my, my cousin's a real estate agent, and I told him I'd probably work with him if I decide to sell my house, you know, because I know he'll take care of me. So you told your cousin that you were going to work with him once you were ready to um, purchase. I understand that. Um, what it sounds like you're telling me is that you want to work with a realtor who you trust and has the best interest in you. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. basically it. So when we meet, um, I can go over all our experience and how we helped um, people, you know, strangers at one point point um how we help them buy their home how does that sound so the tie down would be that is what you want or that's what that you is want, what you right? want. Okay. that is what you want right correct and then at the end you're going to close you're going to say okay so let's just meet tomorrow let's just meet tomorrow at two o'clock so that we can, you know, go over that process. Okay. Okay, so we can meet tomorrow at two o'clock. Um, so we can go over that process of how we helped our past clients. Okay, perfect. Okay, so a little complex, right? There's a lot of steps, but once you kind of do this a bunch of times, you'll get the hang of it. So there's a little scenario down here. Let's maybe we probably should have read through this one because it's already mapped out. Uh, Lisa, you had a question? Hi, yeah, I do actually. So I love that you're doing this scenario with a cousin because I'm literally working with a seller right now who has his nephew in real estate. And um, he's working with me because his nephew's new. <laughs> uh, and I am too, but he doesn't really know that. But no, my question is, I feel like we aren't really going back around to like addressing family. Like, no, it's my cousin. I love him. I just want to help my cousin out. So I'm curious. Are we somehow going to tie in the whole, yes, I, I hear your relationship is important to you, but I'm also curious like, on your cousin and what if I can show you this, would you, you know, can we, can we still have an appointment tomorrow? I'd like to, when we meet tomorrow, this and that, and then when you meet with your cousin too, you know, I kind of feel like I need to um, still address like that they're loyal to the relative for this particular well, then Does that make I sense? Think, yeah, no, that, that makes absolute, absolute sense. Um, I'm going to use this on you right now, right? What I'm hearing you say, Lisa, is that you have a client you're working with and they may want to work with their cousin because they want to be loyal to them or they want to help them out, right? So I think you got to, what you got to do, Lisa, is you got to figure out what, what's the reason they want to work with them. Is it just to help them out? Is that the objection? Or is it because they actually think they're, they're, nephew or whoever is a better realtor and they want someone they can trust because it could be two different things right so it's important that you understand which one you're addressing got it yeah i think i find lately that a lot of people are just wanting to be with their friend and it doesn't necessarily mean they're a better realtor or know anything it's just i'm hearing a lot lately that like oh my friend does real estate or oh my cousin does it 
So I like how you're saying to really get to the, um, you know, to dig deeper and ask them a few more questions to really get down and find out what um, to repeat back to them aside from, oh, you have a relative. I understand, you know, your relative, um, you have a relationship with them and you, you, you know, you really want to work with them. Enrique, yes. what about yeah. her also throwing out that she'd be open, open to pay him like a referral commission so that way he still makes something, but we just can't leave money on the table or something like that. Yeah, so now that's when we're going to like solutions, right? That's a little like past this point. Right now, what we're just trying to figure out is how to break down the objection and how to get to the root of the problem. What we decide to do later, whether we involve the cousin, if that makes sense, or give them a referral fee. Those are all options that we can do, but I think that's a little further down the road for what we're trying to do on this exercise here, right? Right now, this is just teaching you how to follow an objection and how to break it down to figure out what the root is. So like Lisa, let's role play that real quick. Um, so give me the objection that your client, your, your seller or whoever gave, gave you, like, what did they say? Um, well, they said the same thing, like, oh, my nephews are in real estate. I'm going to go with my nephew. I'm going to help him out. He's new to real estate. Awesome. Hey, I, I totally, your nephew's in real estate and you want to help them out. Hey, I totally understand. That's a valid concern. Um, what is it, what is it about helping your nephew out that, you know, is, is what you're trying to accomplish or what is it that you're looking to accomplish by working with your nephew? Um, that just to help him out, he's new to the business. He doesn't really know much. He doesn't have much customers or clients. So I kind of just want to help him with his first sale maybe. Okay. So, so you want to potentially work with your nephew because he's new to the business, doesn't have a lot of clients and you want to help him maybe get his first sale. Hey, I totally understand that. Um, what it sounds like at the end of the day is that you just want to help out your family member, but I'm assuming you, you also want to make sure you get the best service and get the best outcome. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so when you and I work together, I'm gonna walk you through the exact plan of how we're gonna give you the best service, get you the best possible outcome, and how we can also incorporate your nephew so that he gets the experience that he's looking for. Um, that is, at the end of the day, what you want, right? Oh, I love it, yes. <laughs> okay, so yes. great. So let's just go ahead and meet tomorrow so that we can get all the paperwork going and then um, maybe see if your nephew could join us. And then we'll go ahead and make this happen for you guys. I like that. Thank you. Okay. So I want to break down what I did, right? Because that I had to ask a little bit more questions to understand what the root is of why he wants to help the nephew out. It, it wasn't necessarily that the nephew was a better realtor. It was more, I just want to help him out. I want to help him get a client under his belt. Right. So that's why I, I before I, you know, I repeated and approved the first part, but then I asked you another question just to understand a little bit more why you want to work with your nephew. Right, because just saying I want to work with my nephew, that doesn't really tell me much. I want to know why you want to work with your nephew. So I could say, hey, is it do you want to work with your nephew because you think he's an awesome realtor and he's gonna get you the best, you know, possible deal or do the best job? Or are you more just trying to help him out and help him get his first sale? And then what you told me was, no, I just want to help him out and help him get his first sale. All right. Great. Okay, so you want to work with your nephew. You want to help him out. He's new to the business and you want to help him get, him get his first sale. I totally understand that. That's step one, right? Repeat and approve. What I'm hearing you say, um, you know, it sounds like you're telling me is that, hey, you know, your nephew's important to you. You want to make sure you help him out. But at the same time, you want to get the best service. You want to make sure you get the best result. That is correct, right? That is what you're saying. And then she said, yes. And then I went to the, to the, to the step four, Hey, when you and I meet tomorrow, right? I'm gonna go ahead and sit down with you. I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna put this together, how we're gonna get you the best deal, give you the best service, and also how we're gonna help incorporate your nephew into the transaction so that he gets some experience. And then I tied you down by saying, that is what you want, right? And she said, yeah, that's what I want, right? Because yes, now you're, yes. you're accomplishing all the things that I want. I want the best service. I want the best deal, and I want to help my nephew out, right? So rather than me, like what most realtors would have been like, well, hey, well, how long has your nephew been in the business? Six months? Well, you don't want to work with someone who's been in the business for six months. 
right? They might mess up your sale. Like you would have, most realtors would have instantly created a headbutting, right? They would have made that into like an argument where like, I'm making you wrong. So the whole point of this, this dialogue is that you're not making anybody wrong when they have an objection. You're acknowledging their objection. You're understanding it. You're reading it back to them. And then you're taking the deeper meaning of what they want. And then you're helping them accomplish what they want by walking them through this dialogue like this, instead of you becoming the enemy and like you just making them right or wrong. Right. It takes that out of the equation. This is like, this is now like some Jedi stuff, right? This is like psychology and like now going a little deeper into the conversations, but if you can master this type of conversation and you can master this type of dialogue and start incorporating this more into your, your appointments, when you're setting them into your buyer consultations, your listing consultations, you're going to close way more sales because the client is now going to look at you as someone who is helping them get what they want, not someone who is going against what they want and making them wrong. That's the main, main point out of all of this. Um, Let's, let's do one more role play. Who wants to, who wants to, we're going to go through this example right here, right? Which is already in that same format. Who would like to role play this with me? And then we'll wrap it up. Jessica, do you want to role play? I can. Okay. okay, Diana, let's do this. Um, so I'm going to give you the objection, right? We want to wait until next year to do anything. And then you're going to, the second paragraph is, right, you're going to read through everything else, right? Oh, okay. So Diana, um, yeah, it all sounds good, but I think I want to wait till next year to do anything just because, you know, Things are uncertain right now in the market. You know, you, see, you hear all this stuff in the news. Okay, Enrique, I got gotcha. you. So uh, you want to wait until next year to do anything. I completely understand. I really, I, what it sounds like you're telling me is you want to make sure the process flows and you net the highest amount possible. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's basically it at the end of the day. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Well, when you list with me now, I'll be able to do the legwork behind the scenes to prep our 2023 setup rather than just getting and going into it next year. That is what we want, right? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I guess that is what we want. Okay, well, let's initiate and agree now, aiming to go on the market early 2023. Is that fair enough? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that's fair. Okay, good job, good job. So, um, what I want to take you is just give you a little bonus point right here. You see how these words are in bold. Mm -hmm. When you list with me now, there's some psychology behind that of when there's certain words that you're trying to emphasize, it drives it deeper into the client's brain. Right? So that's why they're in bold. So it's like you say those a little bit louder, or a little bit firmer. So when you list with me now, and I kind of raised my voice for those, when you list with me now, I'll be able to do the legwork behind the scenes to prep our 2023 setup rather than just getting things going next year. That is what you want, right? Perfect. Let's initiate our agreement now, aiming to go on the market next year. Fair enough. Okay, so let's try that one more time. Um, Diana, the second one, I want you to emphasize those words when and then list with me now. Okay, so the highest possible is what you want, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. When you list with me now, I'll be able to do the lag work behind the scenes to prep our 2023 setup rather than just getting going next year. That is what we want, right? Yeah, basically. Perfect. Let's initiate our agreement now, aiming to go on the market early 2023. Fair enough? Yeah, yeah, that sounds fine. Okay. Okay, great. Perfect. So this scenario right here, this is like if you were in, in front of someone like at a listing appointment, right? Like you were in front of them, you're doing the consult, you're trying to get them to sign, but then they're like, hey, you know what? You know, it sounds good, but I think we're just going to wait till next year before we actually start anything, right? Um, that's kind of what this scenario was right here. But I want you to, what I want you guys to take away, we're going to wrap up right now is 
this is the big takeaway, right? This is the mindset shift I want you guys to have. Being good at sales is not just like objection handling and like going back and forth with people, right? It's strategically saying certain words, saying it in a certain order that gets people to put their guard down, right? So that it doesn't feel like you're selling someone. It feels like you're agreeing with them, right? It's almost like reverse psychology. It's like, hey, you have this objection. Oh yeah, hey, I totally understand you have this objection. I get it. What I'm hearing you say is this. That is correct, right? Yep. No problem. Hey, when you and I work together or when you and I meet tomorrow, I'm going to walk you through that process. I'm going to cover points A, B, and C, which is what you told me you wanted. That is what you want, right? So you're, you're kind of putting someone in a box, right? Where it's like, there's no way for them to disagree with you because you already took their objection. You already repeated it. You already acknowledged it. You already figured out what they really want. And then you're telling them, this is how I'm going to get you what you want. So it's kind of hard. They're like, yeah, well, yeah, you're, you're listening to me. That is what I want. Right. And then you go for the close. Okay, great. Let's just meet tomorrow. Then we'll go ahead and, and go through all those things. Or let's just go ahead and sign the deal right now. Or let's just go ahead and submit the offer. And then we'll be able to get you the best possible price. Right. Whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. But this guide right here, this, this outline or this blueprint is how you should be trying to handle the majority of, of your objections that you come across, because you're going to come across a lot of objections as you go through this business, right? It's the, a lot of them are the same common ones, you know, when you talk to buyers and sellers. Um, so if you get this down, guys, it's just going to take your sales skills to like the Jedi or the, the Ryu level. Um, really quick, we'll wrap up right in the chat. What's your biggest takeaway from today's session? Write something in the chat for me. Repeat and approve, how you emphasize words. To be effective, yep. Dig deep to see what their true intentions are. Iris will work on tie down and level shift. Awesome. Enrique, something I've also been talking to my team about when we get an objection is the first thing we say is, hey, that's that's a really good question. And I'm actually getting that question from a lot of my buyers. So that gives you time to think, hey, that's a really good question. And then you do the repeat and approve. And then you say, I'm actually getting that question from a lot of my buyers, which means that you're working with a lot of buyers and you actually can understand that situation too. So it gives you time to also think, especially if you're a newer agent, you have no idea what to say. It gives you some time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's the big issue with a lot of people is they don't, they're, they're too busy trying to like hurry up and spit something out that they're not taking the time to think and like strategically walk someone through the dialogue, right? So that's why the repeat and approve or even just doing something like, hey, that's a great question. That kind of like calms everything down, right? So that you have time to like now process your thoughts and go into the next thing. So the repeat and approve, or just like saying, that's a great question, or, hey, um, that's interesting. It now takes it away from like a sales, like back and forth to like, hey, we're going to strategize, right? It, it changes the mindset of the person who you're talking to. Instead of just going like the back and forth, making someone right or wrong, or like trying to close them. So that's a very, very good point, Thomas. Um, remember, this is not how people normally talk, right? Like when you talk to someone regular, regular dialogue, you're talking to a friend or family, it's usually like, they go, you go, they go, you go. And it's like a back and forth exchange, right? Whereas with this, it requires you to slow down. It requires you to listen. It requires you to repeat stuff so that you're setting the tone of the conversation. You're influencing the outcome when you do this, right? Um, so work on this guys, you're not going to get this overnight. This is something that takes, you know, years or months to really get down. 
right? I would say definitely months of practice to like get it to come out a little naturally and then years to like master, right? But the best salespeople out there that consistently book appointments, that consistently close deals or get people to sign or move forward are the people who really study this stuff and master the art of communication. So that's what I want to leave with you guys. Um, I'll put, um, if you want the copy of this, I'll put a link to it in the Slack. And then also in the, uh, you just go into the team resources in Google Drive, just type in Ryu, you'll see it pop up as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Thank you very much for showing up. We will Thank see you, you next week with another session. Thank you. You're welcome.